I want to talk to you today about Christ-like love, and I believe this message is not only just for us, but for the United States of America. <clears throat> if we do not have self-given love in us, the Bible says we have not passed from death to life. Without love, everything we do is in vain. That's what the Bible clearly teaches. In 1 Corinthians 13, 1, it says, For I can speak in the tongues of men and even of angels. If I can speak in the tongues of men and even of angels, but have not love, I am only a noisy gong. A preacher is not preaching because he loves people. It just producing a lot of noise. Can you say <laughs> amen? And you can see if a person loves a people by the way they behave and the way they act and the way they treat people. It says, I am only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all the secret truths and mysteries and possess all knowledge, and if I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains that have not love, I am nothing, a useless nobody. That's the Amplified Bible. It's translated by a lady. And I love it because she lays it right out just like the Greek says it and puts it in words we can understand. Can you say amen? Speaking in tongues, prophetic gifts, and a lot of people, oh, I want to, I want to operate in a miracle power of God. Why? Why? Do you want to operate in the miracle power of God so everybody can talk about how spiritual you are? Or do you want the power of God in your life so you can help people? I really covet the gift of healing. You know why? Because I, 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 I hate to see people sick. And we pray for hundreds of people and they're healed because we love people. Don't brag about it. We do try to give God a little glory for it because he's the one that does it. But you don't have any need for the miracle power of God if you're going to sit and you do nothing and not love and help people. Now, Lord, help me not to make everybody mad in the first two minutes. <laughs> but I'm speaking to myself, too. This message really talked to me when I'm preaching it, you know, made me do some checking on myself. Speaking in tongues, prophetic gifts, the word of wisdom, and the word of knowledge, the gift of faith, giving to the poor, and martyrdom are not a measure of true spirituality. The true measure of spirituality is how do you love people? First Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, whereas the object, and remember I'm just reading this, and I don't claim to have it all nailed down, but I can tell you my goal is to nail it down, with God's help, of course. Whereas the object and purpose of our instruction and charge is love, which springs from a pure heart. What does that mean? Pure motive. Not loving on people for what you can get out of them. <laughs> you know, but loving on people for what you can give them. Whereas the object and purpose of our instruction and charge is love, which springs from a pure heart and a good, clear conscience and sincere, unfinished faith. Everything we teach and do is to produce love out of a pure heart, pure motive. First John three fourteen, we know that we have passed from death to life by this one thing. Because we love the brethren. That's one of the first things I noticed when I truly uh, gave my life to the Lord, especially when I made a total recommitment of my life to the Lord. The first thing I noticed is I, I cared about, I love people all of a sudden. Everybody, all colors, all shapes, all sizes. The ones that liked me and the ones that didn't like me. I loved them. I got irritated with the ones that didn't like me, but I still cared about them. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. And what are the fruit of the Spirit? And what's the first one? Love. If the Holy Spirit's in you, there's got to be some love there somewhere. If you're born again and the Holy Spirit dwells in you, and if the Holy Spirit is not dwelling in you, representing Jesus Christ, then you're not saved. If you're saved, then there's got to be some love there somewhere. You see, he who does not love... Just notice I'm just reading. I had not said much of anything. Just reading. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. Ah. 
Uh, let me know the Bible doesn't mess around. Okay. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in any of It doesn't matter how many times you've been to the altar, how many times you claim to have been saved. If you do not love people, this says you're just not saved. That doesn't mean you're perfect. That doesn't mean you like what people do, but you care about them. You don't want them to go to hell no matter how mean they are. <laughs> you want to do everything you can to get them saved. Can you say amen? I get irritated in traffic like all the rest of you, but let me tell you, I mean, I know probably the reason those people doing some things they're doing is because they got big problems. I need to pray for them. They've got to help them with their problems. When people blows up, a lot of times it's just because they got problems. It's an it's indication they need more love, not less. You see, God says, if you hate someone, you are a murderer, and no murderer has eternal life. People who hate people for any reason are not going to heaven. People talk about racist, racism. It's really very simple. It's not some mystical stuff in the air. Racism is just hating people. That's all it is. Hate just because of a skin color. And it can go all kind of different ways. <laughs> can you say amen? You can have high, white people hating black people and black people hating white people for no reason except their color. And I'm going to tell you right now, I sure ain't going to go to hell over something like that. A racist is someone who hates a person because of the race. That person is on their way to a lake of eternal fire. I just read it. 1 John 4, 7, dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. If you don't have love, you need to get God. Me too. And here again, no pretense on my part. <laughs> I'm perfect. But I, I, my goal is to measure up to this with God's help. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. And you know, I didn't say that. I read it. Let me read it again. 1 John 4, 7, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. That nails it. <laughs> if anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. Now, I know there's some people probably really do love people, but they have a gruff way about them, and they sure don't show it very well. <laughs> But you can't always go by a person's exterior. Can you say, men? I've discovered in the church over the years, some of the people that seems to be just gruff and rough and tough, when I get in trouble, they're the first ones that are trying to help me. That's what love is. Love is self-giving. And, in all, and in always, it's not always been sickening sweet. Some of the most sickening sweet people have been the first ones to try to get me in the back. <laughs> and... Uh, you can't go by that. You've got to go by what they do, especially when you're down. We've had people in this church lose their job, and they were really trying, working hard to get a good job and trying to make a living. And the people in this church would pay their mortgage. And I remember a couple up to a full year paid their mortgage. Why? They loved them. Cared about them. And they weren't sick and sweet. They always, weren't always going up and saying, I love you. They were giving to help them. I love the kids of America. I want to help the kids. Are y'all getting in trouble? Let's give a little money to the playground. Okay. I didn't mean to say that. That was either God or the devil. I don't know which. <laughs> if anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. You see, this makes it very clear if we hate anyone, we are not going to make it to heaven. Today, many people are whipping up hate between the races, between the wealthy and the poor, between Christians and non-Christians. You've got people all across the country right now threatening churches because of the Supreme Court's decision. And then they're telling us we cannot uh, preach against abortion or they're going to burn our churches down and attack us. And let me tell you something. Those people don't care anything about abortion. They're just, they're just uh, terrorists. That's all they are. And they're Marxists and communists, and they want to destroy this country, and they use that as an excuse. Now, there are a lot of people who really believe in abortion, and they're really upset. I understand that. 
uh, but at the same time, anybody's burning down buildings and attacking people and, and this defacing property, they're, they're not concerned about a cause. They're terrorists and they're of the devil and they're doing the devil's work and they're full of hate. You have to be able to accomplish what you believe without hating people and destroying other people and destroying their property. It's pure hate. People doing that stuff ain't going to make it to heaven. You forget it. Well, I don't agree with that. Well, what else in the Bible is there you don't agree with? You see, this is what marchers do. They use an excuse to try to destroy a country. And a lot of things you've seen last few years, it's not people concerned about a real cause. It's people who want to destroy this country. And some of them have actually came out and said it, called themselves marchers. It's not just me. I got it from the wrong lips. <laughs> Pay attention. And don't just listen to one news source. Get out there and get your own news source. Find out what's going on. Can you say amen? And then pray for your country, my people. Which you call by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Always reject hate. It can destroy your life. Always choose love. Don't let people whip you into a hate frenzy. You must make up your mind. You're going to love God and love his people no matter what. There was a black lady and her daughters and grandchildren who came to this church about here about 25 years ago. And her single daughter went to UT. A professor there taught his class that white people are racist, all of us, you know. And we were busting hundreds, thousands of inner city kids to vacation Bible school, getting them saved, teaching them about the word of God. And, and feeding them special every night, taking good care of them. And he's the first saying, all white people are racist. All white people are out to hurt black people. He's just waving up hate. He's a tool of the devil. You see, he'd say, well, they, white people use black people as pawns. Well, some people might, but all don't. There's our, there are some races out there still left. I'm telling you that right now. But I grew up in the 50s and 60s, and I'm going to tell you right now, uh, a lot of people have been converted. They know better, and they're not hating people because of race anymore. And there's some are, of course. But I'm going to let God deal with them. And they better not say anything to me. <laughs> the daughter, the daughter, this daughter came and told me all about it. But his professors kept doing it. And uh, just spewing out hate every day. And I tell you right now, I love that family. I actually spend a lot of time in, in their home. But I'm going to tell you, you can't listen to, to these haters. They left the Knoxville Christian Center and later the mother told someone, we were just pawns to bury. I'm going to tell you right now, that really broke my heart. I love those people so much. But this guy convinced them, well, all white people hate black people. Of course, there's some people on the other side trying to whip up white people to hate black people. But how many know it's all of the devil? I'm not going to sell my soul to the devil. And I don't care what people think. I'm going to speak the truth. You see, they walked away because of a demonized professor from a church that loved them and adored them. Listen to this guy spewing out hate. And boy, it's going on all over the country right now. You see, we born again people we just gotta take a stand and say look if you hate people you're not gonna make it to heaven and I don't you may go to church but you're not going to heaven you see this man's lies really really didn't hurt me it hurt that family it poisoned them y'all pay attention who do you think did that Satan did it he used a UT professor liberal demonized guy but it's still the devil the devil wants to destroy you we must love each other no matter what. We must recognize when we are loved too. I can tell when people love me. Can you? We do not need to believe the devil's lies. Satan is the father of lies. So let's focus on love and what it is like for a few moments. We need to be able to recognize love. 1 Corinthians 13, 4, Love never is envious or boils over with jealousy is not boastful or vainglorious, does not display itself haughty, puffed up. You see, love is not envious, boastful, or haughty and puffed up. Well, how many church members 
over the years, have you seen? They're just haughty and proud and puffed up. The Bible says whatever that is, it's not love. Love cares about people. Even irritating people. Isn't that right, Stan? I irritate him, but he still loves me. <laughs> James chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Listen, that's a promise from the word of God. If we'll humble ourselves before God, God will exalt us and promote us. No, if you're, if you're serving God, no man of any color can put their foot on you and hold you down. Don't let these people poison you either on either side. Uh, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. <clears throat> if we will humble ourselves and love all people, God will exalt us. God blesses me because I care about people. Well, wonder why God blesses Barry and Dottie the way he does. The number one thing is we really do care about people. And I think most people around here have finally seen that. <laughs> We're not sure that I'm perfect. And I forget sometimes to speak, and I forget, you know, the, the other night somebody really needed me, and they, I got a phone call and a text, and I don't know what in the world happened, but I just missed it. And I felt so bad, because I really cared about them. <clears throat> and it was the time I really discovered that it was too late to try to call, and so I waited the next morning and apologized all over the place, but I really prayed, and God really had blessed them and helped them. You know, anyway, once I found out about it, how many know there's no perfect people? And how I miss that, I still don't know. Because I would look at, I look at my phone all the time to see if anybody's called or texted a need or something. And I, and I get up in the middle of the night to pray quite a bit. And I, the first thing I do is look at my phone and see if there's anybody there that texts or call that might need prayer. And I'm not lying to you. This is because I care about people, not bragging. Because only God can produce love. Can you say amen? If there's any love in me, it comes from God. And if God's in each of us, we need to show a little concern about other people. And not let, let some racism be an excuse to mistreat people. 1 Corinthians 13, 5. Love is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride, it is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Look at some of these people, how they're acting. <laughs> love, God's love in us, does not <clears throat> insist on its own rights or its own way because God is going to bless his people. For it is not self-seeking, it is not touchy or fretful or resentful, easily angered. It takes no account of the evil done to it, pays no attention to a suffered wrong, See, if we love people, we do not feel like we're better than they are. I don't care who I'm with. I feel like we're equal before God. If a guy's a millionaire, it's okay. He's just another guy. Can you say amen? And if he doesn't have anything and he's poor, he's even homeless. I mean, he's just another guy to me. And I want to love and help him. I don't want to let people uh, take advantage of me. Can you say Amen. And some people, in the name of love, let people abuse them and t uh, take advantage of them. But uh, we need to have enough discerning to know when people really need help and when they don't. Love is not rude, self-seeking, or touchy, and pays no attention to suffered wrong. I've had people come in here practically trying to live off of us, and they keep coming back. They want $10, and they want $20. And, and finally, I tell them, look, go get a job. What is that? It's love. You can't live off of other people. You can't live the American dream and walk around with your hand out. You've got to get a good job and start giving to other people. And when you do, then God exalts you. Amen. Instead of being self-seeking, we need to love and support others. And while I'm preaching to this church, this message, this is the most loving, self-giving church I've ever seen anywhere. And I happen to be the pastor of it. But, I mean, this is not in any way putting down anybody here, but, uh, but uh, who knows who's listening, <laughs> you know. And so, it's, but at the same time, we need to hear it ourselves again. I need to hear it. And these messages I've been pre preaching on faith, I mean, boy, it really helped me get healed and delivered. I'm not kidding you. But it was the scriptures. And same thing with this. When God told me to preach on love, I said, oh, boy, I'd rather preach on Faith and healing and deliverance. 
And it's like he said, no, you need this too. Philippians 2, 4. Each of you should look not only to his own interest, but also to the interests of others. If we want God seeking our interests, then we must seek the interests of others. That's the way God does things. If I'm always just trying to seek my, for my own benefit, then God says, okay, you go ahead and seek it. But if you want me to bless you, you've got to bless people. <coughs> you see, <coughs> this is the only way to have God's blessing and favor. This is God's way. Love. 1 Corinthians 13, 6. It does not rejoice in injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. See, <coughs> do you rejoice when people have a failure or get hurt? A lot of Christians do. They say, oh, I knew it was coming. They, they, they were asking for it. And they go, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not love. <laughs> they may have done everything they need to do to get that tragedy, but you need to pray that God will help them. Because you ain't perfect either. There's not very many perfect people here. Can <laughs> you say amen? There's not any. Or do you rejoice when truth wins out and when evil is conquered? You see, I love people so it makes me angry when I see anyone mistreated or even deceived and lied to. God is, love can't get angry. How do you know that? When people are used and abused. Love wants and demands justice for everyone. Love just doesn't sit back and let things go. Love speaks out, can you say, man, that's wrong. And we're told not to condemn people. <laughs> then they turn around and condemn us. Romans 12, 19, do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Anybody believe that? I've been around a long time. And I'm going to tell you right now, that is the truth. It seems like God is taking a long time. <laughs> and be glad for that. Because God wasn't patient, I probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> okay. And if I expect him to be patient with me, then I need to expect him to be patient with others, and I need to be patient with others. But vengeance is mine. I will repay. That's why I don't need to get even. God will. On the contrary, verse 20, on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. Do, verse 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You see, love everyone, be good to everyone as much as possible, and leave revenge to God. Someone, mistre if a person is a racist, they mistreat you. I'm telling you right now, God's going to get them. And it goes both ways. If we give God time, he will bring about justice for all of us. And, but we've got to be believers and believe him and believe the word. There is no greater example of Christ-like love than the Good Samaritan. This nails it. And this is where America's got to This one time, there was a time when America was pretty much uh, this way. The Good Samaritan, people really helping people. And I know even during segregation, black people loved to help black people. Black people really prospered, did pretty good because they loved and cared about each other. And the, and but somehow it's like all of us just got full of hate. <laughs> it's the devil. Can you say amen? There is no greater example of Christ-like love than that of the good Samaritan. In Luke chapter ten, verse twenty-five, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, "Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life?" Now, we're talking about eternal life here. He said to him, what is written? What's written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. This guy nailed it in words. <laughs> yeah. We all can nail it in words, but what about deeds? Verse 28, and he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. We're talking about eternal life. Love God, love your neighbor. 
And all your, with all, uh, uh, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. I'm supposed to treat you the way I want to be treated. And when I do, then God's going to bless me. Well, I was good to them, they were mean to me. You cannot go by that. It seems like the people I've been the best to and give the most to are the first ones to get me in the back. That's okay. God's got other people. It's going to bless me. Amen. Anybody paying attention? Did y'all like the message last week a lot better? And the week before that, about faith and all, you know, and confessing the word of God and hearing the voice of God. That's all good. But we need to hear this voice of God, too. This is the one thing that can keep you from all those blessings I preached for several weeks. And me. <laughs> Verse 28, and he said to him, you have answered rightly, do this and you will live. You see, if we love God, we're going to love people because God loves people. Listen to this, John 15, 13. Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Jesus loved us enough to die for us. And he expects us to love each other. Somebody say amen. If we love God, we're going to love people because God loves people. And if God lives in us, he loves people through us. Greater love has no man than this. They lay down his life for his friends. Luke 10, 29. But this is the lawyer again. But the lawyer, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Have you ever wanted to know that? Who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, Jews lived in Jerusalem, so this guy's a Jew. He's going down to Jericho, and a Samar the Samaritans live in Samaria, so this Samaritan will show up here in a minute. <laughs> then Jesus answered and said, A certain man, Jew, went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothes, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. The preacher came by. He said, oh, i, I got to get over here to the hospital and pray with these people. I can't get my hands dirty. And he went on. <laughs> Likewise, the Levites, the Levites, of course, they were the ones taking care of the ministry and the church and doing God's work. Like, likewise, the Levite. When he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. Now, Jesus is telling this. This Levite, you know, uh, he was probably on the praise team and he had to get over to the church. He didn't have time to help change that tire. Verse 33, but you, you might have time to stop and call it a record. Can you say that? Verse 33, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came near and he said, and he, uh, 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 let me start over. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. Samaritan. Jews practically hated each other. I mean, no, Jesus, he, he knew what we was going to face in the 21st century. <laughs> Here's the answer. So he went to him and bandages, bandaged his wounds. Pouring in oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave, him, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. Wow. What if everybody in America made up their mind today we're going to live like that? Wouldn't that be nice? You see, this is the way to be a good neighbor. This is the way to be a good American. This is a, the way to be a good citizen. Luke chapter 10, verse 36. And here's Jesus again. He says, so which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves. And he said, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, 
Uh, go and do likewise. We're commanded to go and do likewise. Everybody has limitations, but somehow we have got to live this. If we find someone in a ditch, help them or get help. Call an ambulance. Do something. And today there's been people raped and murdered and beat up right in public and people just stand there and watch it. Don't do anything. The lawyer asked, who is my neighbor? Now notice something. Jesus never told him who his neighbor was. He told him how to be a good neighbor. Isn't that interesting? He's telling us how to be a good neighbor. Jesus used the Samaritan as an example of a good neighbor. John chapter 4 verse 9. Uh, For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. This is that a lady at the Jericho well, a Samaritan lady. And Jesus, for Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. She was amazed that Jesus was talking to her because Jews didn't talk to Samaritans. Jews and Samaritans pretty much hated each other. Jesus knew their hatred. That is why he used a Samaritan to star in his parable. Today, Jesus would pay, would would say a black man drove by and found a white man robbed and beaten and took him to a hospital and took care of him. We can reverse this. A white man drove by, found a black man robbed and beaten and took him to the hospital and took care of him. This is how, what, this is how God requires us to live we need to be able to recognize when people love us love and hate is pretty obvious you don't have to guess if a guy's a racist you can see it can you say amen Harry and I have been best of friends for 20-25 years he was my neighbor lived right behind me just about everybody there were white but him Okay. But we were best friends, and as far as I know, everybody loved him and accepted him just fine. Our kids grew up playing together. And I'm an old farm boy, and I have a tendency to call everybody boy. And so I was in a victory one night, and I called a Harry boy two or three times. Just, just talk. I said, Harry, you do know I'm... I'm, that's just a habit. I'm not calling you. He said, oh, I know. He said, I can tell when people love me and when they don't. That man's one of the best friends I ever had. If I called him in the middle of the night, he'd be there for me. If he called me in the middle of the night, you know, I'd, you know, I'd chase the devil out of town, beat him up for I and, and go help Harry. Can you say, man, whatever it took. You know, so many people... Allow racism to keep them from the best life has to offer. Your best friend may be another race. And you just don't know it yet. (laughs) I used to never mention race in the pulpit because I was afraid I'd offend somebody. But I had to get over that. And most of us afraid I'd say something offend black people. But, and I kept thinking, well, people just get it. Uh, some people you got to just say it. Lay <laughs> it out. Ooh, about a time. John seven, John four, John four twenty one. And he has given us this command: Whoever loves God must also love his brother. That's in the Gospels. That's from Jesus. And he gave, he, and he has given us this command. What, whoever loves God, well, am I right about that? Anyway, it's in the Bible. <laughs> and he, he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must love his brother. So if you think you're going to get to heaven and not love people for any reason, this, pretty make, this makes it pretty clear. It ain't going to happen. So what do we need to do? We need to repent, ask God to forgive us and cleanse us. And anything in us that's not pleasing to him, let him take care of it. And, and not try to create some emotion, but just let God heal us and deliver us on the inside. 
Choose love, not hate. Don't let people whip up hate around you. Have nothing to do with those people. They're full of hate. They cannot do anything good for you. They can't do anything good for themselves. And I found out a long time ago, if people, if white people hate black people, it's not long till they're hurting white people too. Because hate is hate is hate. Can you say amen? amen. Same thing in the black community. If someone hates white people, eventually they may get around to hating you even though you're the same color. What is that? Satan. <laughs> Philippians chapter 1, verse 9. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more. Let's all stand, please.